This audio presentation is brought to you by imaginationandfaith.com. To download tons of free books, audiobooks and audio lectures by Neville Goddard, please visit our website at www.imaginationandfaith.com. If you have anything to glory about, glory in the fact that you understand and you know the Lord. And the Lord is your own wonderful I amness, your sense of awareness. When you say I am, that is God, that is the Lord. Don't look out to any individual man in this world. Although he could be the messenger sent, he is not the Lord. The Lord resides in you as your own wonderful human imagination, that is God. So let him who rejoices rejoice in this, that he understands and knows me, for I am the Lord. Do you really believe that? If you believe that, then you can take the story and apply the whole thing to yourself. Take this thing off completely, this little garment. And believe that all things are possible to God. And having understood and found him as your own wonderful human imagination, then give him the depths that he possesses. On the surface of your being, all right, you can't do it. You're not supposed to do it. But you can have faith in your own being, which is your own wonderful human imagination. And believe that an imaginal act is at that moment a fact. All right, that's a vision. Now the vision has its own appointed hour. It ripens. It will flower. If it be long, wait, for it is sure, and it will not be late. You simply imagine the act by boldly assuming that you are already the one that you would be. If you dare to assume it, well then you would persist in that assumption. If you call my name tonight, and you call it a month from now, I would respond because I have assumed that I am named Neville. Now there are millions of Nevilles possibly in the world, but I am still Neville. So if you call Neville, there may be in the same room others who will respond. Well then we can single out the one you intended. But nevertheless, I am going to respond. If someone pages me in a lobby, and they only use the word Neville, and there will be others Neville, but I will simply hold my hand to the page boy or whoever he is, and try to identify myself as Neville. Well now, here in this world of ours, do you really believe that your own wonderful human imagination is God? If you do, you will not turn to anyone in this world on the outside. Not one thing in the world is going to lead you. No progress of civilization, man does not advance by any external march of things. When you go back to the awakening of the story in a man, they were digging the earth with a hoe, using their hands. So the progress of man now to a plow. And man in those days, he took, if he had a donkey, if he could afford it, he rode on a donkey. Or he had to walk. Today we fly. But there is no advance in the external march of things for man. For when it happened in a man, he simply tried to tell of an entirely different age. Something that was entirely different. And he called it the kingdom of heaven. And he tells us the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's all within you. So seek not things on the outside, as you see them marching forward, getting seemingly better and better and better. Better ways of killing. Instead of killing a few, now we can kill millions. So we have progressed. We call that the progress of civilization. That is not what the messenger came to tell. He came to tell of an entirely different world. A world where you are eternal. A world where you are God when you awake from this dream of life. 
Now, a letter came this week. In fact, she is here tonight. He said, I found you, just the two of us alone. And you were trying to show me, in fact, you did succeed in showing me, how to get in and out of your own skull. It was so easy for you to move in and out of your skull. And then you took my hand and placed it on the skull. And the hand, as I felt that skull, it felt and looked like the skull of a lamb. It was pliable, but it was a lamb skull. And in and out you went with such ease, no effort whatsoever. And then I wondered, where is Bill? Bill being my wife. And I thought to myself, she should be here. And I inquired about her. And I said to her, Bill is fine. And she said in her letter to me, I knew that you meant it. And then I turned to her and said to her, remember, try to remember that your only concern is the skull. Don't be concerned about Bill or anyone in this world. Your only concern is the skull. That is the secret of it all. That's the kingdom of heaven within you. So try to find out how you get in and out with the greatest of ease. Then she felt, said she, as she was about to awake, that I had at some time gone in and out of that lamb skull with similar ease. And then she said, I awoke. Now you know the story of the lamb in scripture. The word first appears in Genesis in the 22nd chapter. When he is called upon to sacrifice his son. And Isaac turned to his father and said, Father. And the Abraham answered, Here am I. He said, Father, I see the fire and I see the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham replied, The Lord will provide himself the lamb. Then we find the lamb symbol used all through the New Testament. When the messenger comes, and John, meaning now John the Baptist, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world. When he passed by, and again he replied, Behold the Lamb of God. Then Andrew, having heard it, he followed him. And you know the story. He turned and asked, what do you want? And he answered, where do you live? He said, come and see. And he followed him. In the very last book, the very last chapter of Revelation, we speak of the Lamb. Truth is literal. The words employed may be figurative. Not always. But in this case, it is figurative. Yet she, in feeling the head of the lamb, the pliable head that I wore, she felt the lamb, the symbol of the risen Lord, that which was sacrificed. She saw correctly. She saw exactly what she should have seen. It's all within one's own wonderful skull. And the lamb is simply the symbol of he that was sacrificed. Who is sacrificed? A man? No. The universal power of God. The cosmic Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And it is buried in every child born a woman. To single it out and put it as a man and call it by any name, you're simply making an idol in violation of the second commandment. Make no graven image unto me. Yet they are tens and tens of millions of images of the one they call the Christ. Make no graven image unto me. Yes, I yield all blessing 
to the name of the one who took these great truths and gave them current coin. Current, I would say, currency. No one understood it until the messenger came. No one understood the great adumbration, the foreshadowing of his plan. Then he sends, when the time was right, he sends a messenger to experience it, that he could speak from experience. So he comes and he experiences the scripture. The scripture is the Old Testament. There was no other scripture. And he had completely fulfilled the Old Testament. And then he told who did he tell? He told those in the synagogue. So in the synagogue, they passed him a book, the 61st chapter of Isaiah. He opened to that chapter. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He said, this scripture has been fulfilled this day. And then having read just one verse and the half of the second verse, he closed the book and returned it to the attendant. And all eyes were glued upon him. But then within a matter of moments, they began to stone him. Because now he is bringing something entirely different to the world. They were looking for a man. And in a man they knew so well, knew his father, his mother, his brothers, his sisters, <coughs> knew his whole background. And here now he is telling them what is happening within him. And they can't take it. So they rejected him. And then those who came to organize the story of the fulfillment of God's plan of salvation turned around and merged the messenger in his message and made an idol of him. There is no one on the outside to whom you should bow. No one. For the God of whom I speak, the God of whom the scriptures speak, is your own wonderful I am this. It is his name forever and forever. So whenever they ask you his name, don't say Jesus, don't say God, don't say the Lord. His name forever is I am. So when you go unto the people of Israel and they say, who sent you? Just say, I am has sent me unto you. This is his name forever. And by this name he shall be known throughout all generations. So every child born a woman is first aware that he is before he is aware of being anything in this world. Don't take away from him that awareness of being that is the creative power of his own being and then anchor it on the outside and point to some being hanging on a cross on the wall. So for hundreds of years man has gone astray from the truth. They've left the true God and they made an idol and worship a false god. And he sends another. And he will send another. To actually explain. His plan of redemption. To his sons that are scattered. Now I have brought one message. Which is all in scripture. But it's not in any current book. Or any ancient book that I have ever read. And that is the story of David. That is the message that I have been sent to tell. Sent to tell it only because in being sent I did not know what it was I was sent to tell until I experienced it. And having experienced it, that the Son of God, which is the resultant state of a man's journey throughout this dream of life, stands before him personified. But now I must not worship David. He is the resultant state of the individual's journey through this horrible dream of life. But when he stands before you, there is no doubt in your mind as to who he is and the relationship between yourself and what you're looking at. And there's no doubt in his mind as to what he is looking at. Now who is he? We are told in scripture, I made him a witness to the people. Now let us go into the first chapter of Revelation, the fifth verse, speaking now of Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, 
the ruler of all kings of earth. Now we go to the 55th chapter of Isaiah. My steadfast, sure love for David. I have made him a witness to the people. Now we go to the 89th Psalm. Speaking now of David. I have made him the firstborn, the ruler of all of the kings of earth. He comes only now to fulfill scripture. And the only scripture is the Old Testament. And we are told in the 30th chapter of Proverbs, every word of God proves true. Do not add to his words, lest you be called a liar. Do not add one word, or in any way modify his word, lest you be called a liar. Read it in the 30th chapter of Proverbs. Well, if it cannot be added to, and the promise is made to David, I have made him a witness to the peoples. I have made him the firstborn of the dead. I have made him the ruler of all the kings of earth. And now all this is now stated in the New Testament given to the messenger. And then the messenger is ballooned up to be worshipped. No, the word Jesus, which means Jehovah. In every one, when the story really unfolds, he is the Lord Jesus. He doesn't change his identity. He still remains Mary, Jan, Stan, whatever name you bear. But the story itself unfolds in the Lord. And the Lord is the Lord Jehovah, which means Jesus. So he is now bearing witness to the truth of God's word, which is in the Old Testament. So he is a witness to the peoples. And then they take the witness who is the messenger and merge him with the message bury him in his own message and then personify it cut it out of wood and make an image out of it in defiance of the second commandment make no graven image unto me so make no graven image how are you going to see your own wonderful human imagination you will see him in action. If today you change your attitude towards life, a change is going to take place in your world. You will see the results of this change of activity in you. But the one who caused the change, you aren't going to see him. But you will see him outfixed in the results. So no one has ever seen God. Only the sun sees him. Only the personification of that resultant state having gone to the very end and awakened within yourself, taking all of these shadows and giving life to them and giving a true pattern, the real pattern. And then he comes before you and he stands before you and he calls you Father. In fulfillment of the 89th Psalm, I have found David and he has cried unto me, Thou art my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. For he stands right before you. But don't now personify him. Look upon him as a resultant state. But man has taken all the characters of scripture and treat them as persons. They're not persons. They're personifications. And he's taken the gross first sense that conveyed the instruction for the instruction. That is not it. Don't take any of these persons. They aren't persons. They are simply personifications of the eternal states of God's plan of redemption. So the reality is your own wonderful human imagination. That is God. That is the Jehovah of Scripture. That is the Jesus of the New Testament. And so, if you're going to boast, if you're going to in any way, Remember these things of the ninth chapter of Jeremiah. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. 
Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me, for I am the Lord.